Hello everyone, I am Shriya and we will be discussing NumPy in this recitation. We will cover the installation of NumPy, initialization of arrays, how to access data, how to play around with this data and we'll wrap up with some math operations. To begin with, NumPy is a fundamental Python package for mathematical, logical and even linear algebra operations. It is the go-to choice for tasks like vectorizing code and for performing fast operations on arrays as it provides versatile set of operations. In today's discussion, we will cover key aspects but I highly recommend reviewing the documentation for both the specific functions that we will cover and NumPy itself. Hopefully, with the help of this recitation, you should be able to do your homeworks pretty smoothly specifically your part ones where you will be implementing MyTorch, which is PyTorch from scratch. Typically, NumPy is pre-installed on Colab. You can verify its availability using pip show. In case it's not installed, you can install NumPy by executing pip install NumPy. After installation, you can import it like any other package. With NumPy, you have the flexibility to generate one-dimensional, two-dimensional, or any n-dimensional array. The commonly used functions for creating one-dimensional arrays are arrange and lin space. In np.arrange, an array is created with values within the specified range shown here, with an array which is ranging from 0 to 9. In np.lin space, you define numerical range with a lower bound, upper bound, and specifying the number of evenly spaced values that you desire. If you want to create n-dimensional arrays, there are various functions you can use. To create an empty array, you can make use of np.empty function, which initializes the array with very small values or zeros. If your goal is an array filled with zeros, you can opt for np.zeros function. Similarly, for an array of ones, you can use np.ones function. Despite the differences in content, the method of calling these functions remain consistent. Simply provide the desired array shape as parameters. It's noteworthy that using np.empty may result in unpredictable initial values. So please be cautious when you are relying on this function for specific initializations. Suppose you already have an array and you wish to generate a new array with the same shape, either filled with zeros or ones. With NumPy, you have a handy option. You can use np.zeros like or np.ones like to easily create a new array. By doing this, you get another array with the exact same shape as the original array. In this case, 4, 2 and it's ready with either uh, zeros or ones. If you want to create an array of a specific size and fill it with numbers other than 0 or 1, you can use np.full. Just provide the desired shape and the value that you want to fill the array with. So this will result in a filled array of the specified shape and the designated fill value. And similarly, you can also do a full like, like the zeros like and ones like function where you give a particular fill value and it will create an array with that value and the dimensions of another array that it matches. Suppose now you have a list or a tuple and you want to create an array from it. You can easily do this by using np.array and providing your list or tuple as the input. This command will create another array with the same dimensions as your original list or tuple. It's important to note that the resulting array won't be a 4, 1 shape. Instead, it will be a flat array with 4 elements. Therefore, you might need to reshape the array accordingly if you plan to perform operations like transpose. If your data is stored in a text file or another format, you can easily load it as numpy array using either np.load.txt or np.load. So these functions will automatically populate the predefined variables with the loaded data. Moving on, let us talk about a special library function with focus on random variables. The random module in Python allows us to generate random numbers, which is very useful capability in many programs. 
So the random function can produce random integer of float and other random types. It is a versatile function with many options. So I encourage you to review the documentation to understand all of the possibilities. To get random integers between 0 and 10 with a specific size, uh, we can make use of np.random.randend. And if you want the same set of random numbers in 10 consecutive runs, you can set a seed before calling this random function. This guarantees consistent results. Take a moment to review the documentation for better grasp of using and setting the seed when working with random numbers. So let us say that you want to create an array with random numbers, but you want it to be from a uniform distribution and not simply random integers. This is a function called as np.random.rand that will help you do this. This is usually from a uniform distribution over 0 to 1. So if you want to mean shift it and add some sort of standard deviation or variance to it, you can also do that by specifying a formula yourself and then generating the random numbers and pushing it into the formula as you can see here. So we'll stop here for this part of the recitation and we'll start with how do you access and slice data, modify data in the next recitation. Thank you.